Remodelling the former Commonwealth Institute in London's Kensington district took almost five years and cost close to 100 million euros. The modernist building that opened in 1962 offers the Design Museum a spacious new home. Architect John Pawson was in charge of the restoration and refurbishment. He wanted to fill the interior with light and to work with the sweeping copper-clad roof. When you walk in, it's a visceral feeling. I mean, you are affected by Spain. But I think I've managed to make it feel also intimate. It's very large, but I think with the choice of materials. And I wanted a place which people felt um, really good uh, to be in. Because it's, I think once you, once you set people at ease, then they can start thinking about things and they can compose themselves and they can talk about design or think about design or they can, you know, they can get to the loo quickly. <laughs> By moving to its new premises, the Design Museum has tripled its floor space to 10,000 square metres. It will continue to host temporary exhibitions but will now also display, free of charge, a permanent collection of design classics from around the world. For example, a Vespa motor scooter and a reconstruction of the Frankfurt kitchen from 1926, the mother of all fitted kitchens. What is it that we see in the objects that we use? What meaning do they have for us beyond the simple purpose of function or utility? Function is not a, a simple term, in fact. We have emotional functions, we have practical functions, and we're trying to give people the insight to say what lies below the surface of an object. The museum was founded by the renowned designer Terence Conran, who also launched the furniture chain Habitat. It was first housed in an old warehouse on the south bank of the Thames, not far from Tower Bridge. It opened in 1989 and, from the start, was devoted to the entire spectrum of design, from interiors through graphic arts and fashion to industrial design. Euromax has reported on many of its exhibitions, like the ones about fashion maestro Paul Smith and shoe guru Christian Louboutin. Terence wanted to say design is about the world around us, about mass production, about the things that shape everyday life. And here that's exactly what we're trying to do, but also understanding that design does not stand still. Once you could have looked entirely at chairs to tell the story of design. Here we know, of course, that people love coming to see our chairs, but really the story of design is so much wider. With its change of location, the Design Museum is predicting its visitor numbers will almost triple from around 200,000 a year. Its new home is close to such major league attractions as the Victoria and Albert Museum, the Serpentine Gallery, and the Natural History Museum. So by the standards of Tate or the Victoria and Albert Museum, which get 4 million, 3 million people a year, we're still modestly small, but it will be a good, comfortable, pleasurable experience. The change of address will not only benefit the museum, it might also help revive the neighbourhood. Kensington is an area which is full of very wealthy people, and apartments that people buy and maybe don't even use to live in. So it's a place which once was full of life and creativity and ideas, and now sometimes you feel that there's nobody on the street, there's not much atmosphere. We can bring that atmosphere back. The Design Museum London reopens on November the 24th, bigger and even better, in its stunning new home.